Um, today I am doing a short little video showcasing my Gentoo Linux install. I have been using it for almost a month now. I've riced it out. I've done everything I need to use it. I've been enjoying it. It's been uh pretty nice overall. I really like the experience of Gentoo, but um, my main issue is obviously what also uh, Gentoo's biggest feature is that it is you compile everything it just takes a very long time to download and install and to compile stuff it doesn't take much effort it takes a lot of time which does get annoying um overall though comparing it to arch linux and the specifically the aur which I understand it is kind of a hard comparison because it's not a thing that a lot of other distros offer. But overall, I do find it that it is still more effort to install things than it is on Arch Linux with the AUR. As in, like, uh, usually when you have a package, someone already has a AUR repo that you could just you could just download and it will download it most of the time without any issues. Here, um. A lot of the time, you uh, for some things that have an emerge package, it's really nice. It just works. You just download it, and it's really nice. It all just works, compiles everything. But with but it, but when when that's not the case, it's quite it's it's not just quite a bit of effort. It's a lot of effort to stick with the Gentoo philosophy of compiling everything because. For each different package, for each different application, you need to figure out how to compile it from source, how to install it, how to do all that. It is just so much effort. And I understand that a lot of people are fine with that and they are okay with um, putting in that effort for the sake of this. But for me specifically, this was quite the challenge. It, it really uh, got in my way. A, even though I really tried to make it work, and I did actually enjoy a lot of the things that Gentoo has to offer, but I still overall think it, it in general it just slowed down my workflow, specifically when I'm using it on a desktop computer that's made for work and getting things done. However, Arch, for example, specifically, I'm once again I'm comparing it to Arch because that's the last distro I've used for the past three years before I made the switch to Gentoo. Arch really does not uh handle that that much better than gentoo does i mean in terms of it has a big drawback in terms of stability arch linux is not very stable there's a lot of issues with it packages get pushed that are really not ready for use or testing sometimes just straight up crashing a bunch of systems until like you wait a day and then you update again and now everything works that's just the way that rolling releases work i guess but specifically with arch it's slightly worse but it is what it is um in terms of stability gentoo was and is very stable it's insanely stable i absolutely love it i love the stability but i just don't have the time or the effort to keep doing all the work needed to keep it stable and to keep it functional and whenever i need to install something it's a lot of effort a lot of work so yeah overall i really i really enjoyed this experience and i'm glad i did even though i'm i'm making this video as kind of a goodbye to gentoo and also to kind of to capture my experiences and to share my experiences and also a little bit to uh capture the a little bit like show you the rice that i've made for my gen to install because i'm kind of proud of it and yeah so let's get let's get let's get to the 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 showcasing part um in terms of the desktop environment initially i was going to use fluxbox but i did have issues with fluxbox because i have more than one monitor and turns out fluxbox is really 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 bad at handling more than one monitor the way it actually handles more monitors it just makes one giant monitor and then it imagines that that monitor is like being cut up into pieces to be along multiple things like it and because monitors can only have a uh a screens an x11 can only have a rectangular shape uh i at that point in time i had one vertical monitor and the other uh, another horizontal monitor both 1440p one vertical one horizontal and because of that what would happen is that the sh uh it would create a huge square monitor and a lot of things when you full screen an app it would first of all uh, uh, full screen it onto both monitors and also a bunch of content would just be cut off in between those two monitors and 
I thought for a very long time that I was doing something wrong. I spent like like several days trying to fix it tr after because at that point I've already like put an effort like pricing and everything. And it was only when I tried to watch YouTube or play some games when at full screening it just didn't do what I expected it to do. It full screened it on top of the, all the monitors. Um, so yeah, I quickly switched away from uh, Fluxbox for that reason. Um, it would have been really nice to know ahead of time, but I guess you just find that out yourself, apparently. Um, so now I am using Openbox, and Openbox, I've had some experience with it before, and I really, really enjoyed using Openbox. It's one of those just like just works things. It's fairly old but it also is modern it just works everything about it you could just open anything and it just shows up and everything just works you you can have keybinds to full screen things you can have keybinds to rearrange them to different monitors different desktops anything you can just do it while with uh my this is one of the things is that uh why i chose uh open box instead of a tiling window manager was because with tiling window managers certain applications that are not, I uh, do not have the idea of a tiling window manager at all. They often, first of all, uh, are hard to work with. And then sometimes configuring some stuff can help with that, but are still not ideal. Some applications such as like uh, KiCad, which opens a bunch of different windows for different things that is clearly meant to be like one window on top of the other, uh, that really struggles in window managers such as a uh, Hyperland, which is what I used previously. So using a floating uh floating window manager is really really helpful it it it, it just uh makes allows for more support of more things and th more things just working out of the box including games because i do play quite a bit of games on my linux uh desktop and with gentoo i had a surprisingly good experience partially to due to using x11 and another part of it is that um uh, uh, because of the a floating window manager rather than a tiling window manager. Another reason why I'm I'm moving back away from Openbox and X11 is because the release of the NVIDIA 555 drivers, which make Wayland support actually good for games. I was using Wayland for, for almost a year with NVIDIA and it was fine, but you could just, you just can't play most games on it. They would flicker. It was quite bad, but now with the NVIDIA 555 driver, apparently people have been writing that it, 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 just, it just it just all works. Other other than some Electron apps still glitching out, but Electron is Electron and a little tinkering can fix it. So currently, one thing that I discovered while using this, while ricing this uh, Gentoo install is how much I love the idea of a bitmap font terminal, like a, like a pixelated one. It, it's just, it feels so retro-y. It, it feels like whenever I'm typing in the terminal, it's like I'm playing some kind of game. It's like, I, it's, it, I've, I'm not old enough to have like a Game Boy or anything, but it feels, even to me, retro-y and nostalgic. It, it just, uh, it's, it's, it's like the same reason why people make games for Pico 8 or, uh, Tick, Tick 80, I believe, or Tick 90. I, I'm not sure. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, it's that kind of like feel and restriction just makes it feel very unique each time I'm interacting with the terminal. And I use the terminal for basically everything. I don't even have a file manager of anything. I just use commands and it just makes that whole experience much more playful and my whole computer more playful. So, which gives me more enjoyment of doing those things. I was very surprised by how much that affected it and how much fun that gave me it, there's a reason why there's so many um hacker based games and such like uh, um kind of like tis 100 i don't know that whole aesthetic i really love that and i know for a fact that i'm gonna bring that back and then uh, on my next linux install i absolutely adore that vibe it feels just correct for a terminal to be pixelated and to have all that it would be really cool to have like some uh pixel art icons and such in the terminal probably might get on that as well but it's awesome another thing i put quite a bit of effort into is my bar i really i i made sure to add everything that i need i really like how customizable is it to be exact so this is polybar and i have absolutely everything that i need on here i have my I, first of all i have a theme just like the terminal with the same uh typeface and i have a music 
interact uh, a music title name i have my uh, host name i have my my username i'm sorry i have my ip just for whenever i'm doing something from my laptop and i need to like scp some files over it's really nice um I have the current window name title at the top they have some system information as well as the time and another thing that i uh, put in quite a bit of effort into that i absolutely love is a disk status and a network status utility that shows up only when there's any issues with the network if there's high ping if there's high if there, the network is just unreachable or if any of my disks were weren't able to mount because i do have three disks all well, three disks total my mount my root partition disk then uh uh a Steam library uh, disk, and then also a hard drive for everything else. And whenever some of the other ones don't mount, it's really nice to know. And it just pops up with, in red, like a small little warning telling me that it didn't mount. Or also when uh, I'm low on disk space, it also pops up and tells me that. Uh, then I have just my uh, scripts for the GPU, RAM, and CPU usage, as well as the date. And yeah, everything's themed in the same way as the terminal. And absolutely adore this. One thing I do wish Openbox did, though, is a better, like a better way to separate between monitors. As in, it does have a good separation for that. But whenever you're alt tabbing or doing like this a little pop up of your things, every single monitor still is is one desktop. It's all of them together. Not each one has their own desktop. And because of that, they're all combined. So whenever you want to switch to something, you have a huge list. Like if I'm, I have multiple windows open here, it, it'd be really nice to just open uh, open this menu here or alt tab here. And it would be only these ones that are on this monitor specifically. But in this case, it ends up collecting all of them. So there's a very big list of and a lot of information to go through each time. Another thing you may have noticed is my cursor. This is actually a cursor uh, from uh, needy streamer overload. But I wrote a script because it, it was quite the experience because it's using X cursor. You it's like some it's a very interesting format I, I i spend quite a while writing a script that will export that back into uh, i think bitmap files and those bitmap files i then had the script uh find and replace the colors to make the it uh, black and white because the original one is purple and this like yellowish color it's the ones from it's the colors from needy streamer overload awesome game and i really like the aesthetic of like a pixelated cursor just like i love the pixelated font and uh, but I didn't want it to be colored, so I just had that and I transformed it using that little script to make it black and white. I also put a small little theme on top of Firefox, which is just not much. It has like the simple, uh, it uses the same font for uh, specifically for stuff in Firefox and also on the start page. But when you open whatever, it does not use that font. It's just whatever. However, if there is code, wonder if there's any code here probably not um if i open something like libre chat and i have it write code it will also be in the same pixelated font which i absolutely love it just feels correct once again and everywhere it's just the pixelated font it, it just be the code being pixelated feels correct to me i don't know and i absolutely love this whole aesthetic and that's what i went with as well so yeah overall um open box ui like the right click shortcut is really nice i put absolutely i don't need that many stuff things that i i don't need that many things here i have only like the most important things and for most things when i do open i still i just have a kitty terminal open and i run the command like for obs for example i just just run obs in the terminal so yeah what i enjoyed about uh, Gentoo Emerge is really nice. I had a lot of doubts about it, specifically because it was written in Python and it's made of shell scripts. For some reason, I did have that uh, like preconcepting notion that shell scripts and Python they do not sound very stable. They sound very slow, and usually they are. But in this case, it, Emerge is surprisingly well made for being written in Python and built on shell scripts for uh, package builders, package builds. It really is a really good package manager. And for a distro like Gentoo, where you need to compile something, it better be a really good package manager. However, I did have a lot of issues, not a lot of issues, some issues that I probably would not have that many 
uh, of if I had like uh, researched more about the package manager and figured more things out. But very often, uh, the package manager would ask me to add stuff to the configs or like the like the accept keywords and such, and it would often um, uh, make uh, conflicts of some sort. Then I'd have to like run commands to try to solve those conflicts. It was, it, I mean, it, it, I, I had to figure it out, but it did get annoying sometimes to constantly have to go back and forth between running the command making some changes to try and get it, allow it to run the command back and forth back and forth but overall very well built and as as for a uh, such a package manager that does you spend a lot of time in and spend a lot of time working with it, it better be very well built so now i'll talk a bit a little bit about what i am uh switching to instead of be using um gen 2 I plan to install uh, Endeavor OS. I plan to install specifically the KDE version. I think that's the default actually with Plasma 6.1. Um, my main my main thing is that uh, I really want to have HDR. I at least try HDR on Linux. Uh, my monitor supports it and is supposedly supposed to have be really good with it. It's a QD OLED, and I really want to have that experience. Uh, I don't know how long I'll stay on Endeavor OS 4, but I think it, KDE is one of those things that um, also is, uh, just usually kind of works because a lot of things are developed for it, and I don't think I'll have many problems with it, and I think that will at, at the cost of uh, customizability and at the cost of bloatware. Uh, the reason why I'm going specifically with Endeavor OS is because it has a very minimal KDE installed by default with very little extra um, applications by KDE. So I could achieve the same thing with Arch Linux, but I have heard of other people having struggles with that in the sense that in the sense that they end up installing what they think is the minimal packages for KDE to work, but then things just don't work because there was some other package that they should have installed that was not a dependency, nor was it mentioned anywhere that is also a package that they need to work. So my hope is that Endeavor OS have that all figured out. So being a minimal KDE install, it's it's minimal enough, but with enough things to have everything working. And I was considering doing some other distro, but I think for now I'm gonna try to stick with something that I know more just because I want more functionality. I am thinking of buying a uh, ThinkPad where I can install just whatever the heck I want and mess around with without having to, uh, without having to damage the, my uh, workflow at all. Not, not to mess with my desktop workflow, not to mess with my laptop workflow, I just want something to mess around with and I'll probably do that. So, despite installing a, let's say, le not as fun dish show, it will still, like, the goal is, uh, the goal is to, yeah, sure, it will be less fun, but it will be definitely good for work. And the ThinkPad, whatever laptop I choose for that, will be the one I get to mess around with, and I'll probably be able to make more videos about and such. I have a capture card, after all, now that I bought, and... I could use that to record and it'll, it'll be fun. But yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I had a lot of enjoyment using Gentoo. I think it was a good experience. I have a much better understanding of Gentoo as a whole. And it kind of like after using Gentoo, it kind of really breaks away from that like uh, stereotypical meme idea that like Gentoo is like very difficult and everything. It's 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 really not that much more difficult than Arch. And with how good the documentation is, it's arguably easier than Arch. But yeah, um, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and subscribe to see more videos like this. A like if you enjoyed. And I hope to see you around in the next one. Bye.